you ready? Let's go. Welcome, everyone. You are now tuned into another amazing edition of Sonya on Air. I'm your host, Sonya Hudson Payne. And how do I start off each and every single show? You guessed it. I have another great show for you. Joining us in just a few short moments, I have the newest cast member of Bravo's Married to Medicine, Anila Saja. Now, not only do we have conversations with celebrities, we have conversations with celebrities to unpack their pivotal moments and their milestones. So I'm just really curious to pick her brain. I want to know, how does it feel being the newest cast member on a very long running successful show? I also wanna know a little bit more about her career, something that we don't see on television. So do me a favor, before we get into this conversation, I need you to go across every streaming platform and subscribe to Sonya On Air. I need you to engage with Sonya On Air. I need you to listen. I need you to like. I need you to share, repost, and don't forget to hit the notification button. And also, Sonya On Air is offering the amazing advertising space. Who doesn't want a billboard? in 41 cities across the United States. If so, make sure that you email sonyaonair at gmail.com. So without any further ado, let's get right into it with Anila. Hi, Anila, how are you? Good, how are you? I'm fine, thank you for joining Sonya On Air. I really appreciate you. Yeah, I'm excited. Me too, me too. So let's just jump right on into it. Oh, someone's doing <laughs> <laughs> oh wait, they're in the interview. Oh my god. Girl, um, get your glam. Get your glam on. There's nothing wrong with that. We're good. We're good. They they love to keep on getting me ready. <laughs> I love it. I, I need my own personal glam team. <laughs> but you know, I just want to jump right into the conversation. Like I said, I'm super excited to have you as the I'm newest, excited. Yeah, the newest cast member of Bravo's Married to Medicine. Now it's That's not right. easy joining a successful show that has been successful season after season. It reminded me of a little girl jumping into the double judge rope, just trying to find your footing. How oh did God. you find your footing on the show? Honestly, it was really hard. I mean, these girls have been together for what, eight years and they have so much history with each other. So it was definitely tough. And it's like joining any new group of friends, right? Like initially they're kind of just like, checking you out, seeing what you got to say. There might be a little bit of hazing, bullying, you know, and they really just want to feel you out. But I feel like, you know, in any group that I like become friends with, I'm, I, I have kind of a bubbly personality, you know, and I kind of, I can fit into any group. That's, that's how I feel my personality is like, you know, I'm just very outgoing. I get to know the girls and I think the energy that I gave, I thought was a great energy and I think they all loved it. Yeah, you can tell when a person is being transparent and authentically themselves and it mm -hmm. definitely translated to us, the viewers. We saw that you were just being your authentic self. Now you talked about friendships. People often wonder how do people land these roles on reality television? Did yeah. you land your spot because you were friends with Toya or had you been watching the show and wanting to be on the show all along? It's funny because I think maybe I watched like the first season of the show a long time ago. Mm -hmm. um, but, but you know, with reality, it's really hard for me to watch all the reality shows that are on there. I love Bravo and I love all the shows, but you know, I, I honestly like our builder was building our home and then building Toya's house. And literally he was like, oops, he was literally like, Let's go, let me show you this other house that I'm building. I didn't even know it was Toya's house. Oh. When we walked over there, she would, she happened to be there like looking at her construction and we just met and we hit it off. Like, you know, she has little young kids. I have young kids and we just became friends, you know? And mm -hmm. she was excited that another young couple is moving into the neighborhood and we were only gonna be four houses down. So we literally stayed in touch. We, um, you know, 
I, she came to my birthday party. We would come to each other's homes, just hang out. Our husbands got along really well. The kids played together. So it was, it was a lot of fun. Yeah. Wow. Hanging out wow. with her. And, and that's just kind of how it developed. You know, there was nothing planned or anything like that on my end. So when the idea was proposed to you to be on Married to Medicine, like, was it instantaneous? Like, oh yeah, let's do this. Or did you have some reservations that you had to talk over with your husband? Absolutely. So I was okay with it, but when I, I was afraid to ask my husband, but he was kind of like, you know, the only reservation that he had was like just having our kids, you know, being shown on there and just, you know, how it was going to be with that. But really, you know, we were both pretty cool with it. We're like, you know, if we're going to share our life, the kids have to be part of it too. So we have to share it all. Yeah. Nice, nice. Yeah. You know, people with children often shy away from them being on camera. Has life has life changed for your children in any way? Like going to school, they're like, oh yeah, I see your mom on television. How's that going for the kids? They're very young, so they don't really hear a lot of it. Um, you know, my daughter's five years old only. So, you know, I don't think the kids know anything about her being on a show. And then my son, he's only three. Oh. So he's really young. So he has no idea. I mean, initially, I think they were just like, oh, there's cameras all around. But, <laughs> you know, don't. they don't. They have no idea. <laughs> they got used to them after some time. And they were like, OK, this is this is normal. This is life. Right, so. right. That's going to be interesting once they realize that mommy is on television. They're probably just thinking that it's something fun now. So I would love to be a fly on the wall when your young <laughs> children realize I know on television. Make sure you yeah. document that because that's what I think it's television. funny because I, I think they think this is just life, you yeah. know, being on TV. They don't realize that it is a little bit of a big deal, you know, but they just think it's this is normal. This is how yeah. it is. You know, yeah. there there's mommy on TV. There I am, you know. <laughs> <laughs> wow. So you, you brought up Toya a little bit. I just want to talk about Girl Code some because we saw initially when the season started, you and Toya, very, very close friends. But mm -hmm. then we're starting to see a little conflict and a little turmoil, especially when Toya kind of blasted you in front of everyone else and probably made an allegation that you weren't handling your finances well. How did you yeah. feel about that moment? Honestly, at that moment, I was trying to play it off and be cool and 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 kind of laugh it off almost just because I'm like, okay, girl, you're embarrassing me, but I'm going to play it cool. I'm going to just laugh it off, make it like a joke. But when I really started thinking about it, I was like, why would she do that in front of these other friends of mine that I'm just getting to know, mm -hmm. you know, and it's like, and honest and Honestly, it wasn't even a big deal. Like at the end of the service, like I was getting my hair and makeup done that whole week. And at the end of it, I was paying for my services and for the services. And so it really was not even a big deal. Like they were just confused because Toya set it up. So I think they reached out to her and they were like, hey, are you covering Anila? Or, you know, it's just like, who's covering who? Right. So I think that's why it came to her. But really, they're not coming to her because I'm not paying. That's never a problem. Finances is never a problem in my family because, hello, my husband is a plastic surgeon. Okay. okay? <laughs> so let's not get that mixed up or confused. Um, so if she's having financial issues, that's on her. Don't put that on me. You know, so I think I, it kind of got me a little irritated. But but, you know, here's the thing. I am her friend and I was really trying to like, I kept ignoring all the little things that she was doing to me because that was obviously one big thing, but even like kind of pushing me and telling me to shut up and stuff. And it was honestly just fueling, you know, like mm -hmm. I was like, okay, this is getting a little bit too much. I'm, I can let it only go so much and ignore it so much, but at some point, I'm going to like, I can only be a lap dog for a little bit, but I'm going to bite then, you know, <laughs> you can't, you can't push me that far. So right. after some time I had to, and then, and then when I was hearing from people in my neighborhood that she was saying stuff about me, that's what really put it over the top. Because I like, if you have something to say, say it to my face. Right. And you know, and I haven't even moved into the neighborhood yet. <laughs> and you're already saying stuff to these girls 
they're already having like opinions about me. They haven't even met me yet. Right. Right. So, so that was just really not cool. I just don't, that doesn't work with me. But you know, just once again, just talking about girl cold. So I know that, you know, Toya said some things that may have violated girl cold, but have you really reflected about how you embodied girl cold? Because at some point in time, you started talking about Toya to her enemies. So did you think well, about that? I would say that I wasn't really talking about her. I was more like, hey, you guys have known her. Like, what's going on with her? This is not the Toya I know. Like, when I first met Toya, she was a different person than when, you know, she introduced me to the group. She completely changed. She just became mm -hmm. this, like, hey, Anil is, like, my project. I mean, I want her to be like me or something. And all this bullying kind of started, and that's not who I knew. So I was more so going to the ladies and asking them more like, hey, what's going on? Like, you guys know her, like getting more like help and like advice from them more so than talking about her. Mm -hmm. I was not talking really behind her back at all. Mm -hmm. I, I understand, you know, but that that is how it kind of read across the television screen. And I know, especially amongst women, loyalty can mean a lot. And when you find your friend going to enemies, sometimes you're not trying to unpack the real story. You're just unpacking, you know, what you think that you see. So aside from Toya changing uh, throughout the show, is there any other cast member who changed throughout the show for you? Um, I, I honestly don't think so. I mean, I was really just getting to know all of them. I would say that Heavenly and I, we started off a little rough in the beginning. I think she, you know, maybe bullied me a little bit in the beginning, but you know, I think that's kind of how she is with the new girl, but her and I became really close, you know, at the end we're very, I mean, we see each other outside of the show all the time and hang out. So I think she's changed a lot. I think she gained a lot of respect for me once she got to know me. Um, even Jackie, you know, I don't, I think she was, you know, trying to figure me out in the beginning. Simone's always kind of been my sister from then and now. I think she has Toya's back, but she understands where I'm coming from in this whole situation as well. So, um, and Contessa and I, we, um, when I first met her, I was like, wow, she's, uh, she's a great girl. I see like goodness goodness in her like she seems like a good person mm -hmm. we kind of had a little bit of a conflict you yeah. know at the rocky dinner but her and i talked it out like grown adults worked through it and we moved on i love it i love it. and, and mm -hmm. i asked you these questions because they are women tuning in of course you know women we run the world and mm -hmm. oftentimes we just need reminders of how to navigate uncomfortable situations amongst other women where it doesn't have to resort to something, you know, explosive, but it just can right. be resolved by a simple conversation. Yeah. So, I, and I agree. And I'm, I'm always up for that, you know, and that's why even at Jackie's, when I was talking to Toya, I was talking in, in a low voice. Yes. So it was just between us and just kind of telling her what I'm hearing. And, you know, I just, I just had had it at that point, you know, I get it. Everyone, I know. I, I'm I'm praying that my earring stays on. <laughs> We're going oh, the Lost the earpiece. <laughs> no, but you know, it was just it was hard with her, yeah. you know, because she was just not the girl that I knew when I first met. And you know, for me, it just felt good to talk to some of the ladies. And yeah, maybe not the best to talk to some of her enemies because obviously they're not going to say the best things about right. her but it was almost like you know i'm just trying to figure out how i can make it like mend it you know like yeah. get us back together more so than keep fighting with her because i didn't like it i didn't like fighting with her yeah you know i i, I totally understand that you know um so where do you stand now with toya have you two kind of you know mended your friendship or or not. You'll have to just tune in to see. Really? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll be tuned in every single week like I have been for the past couple of years. But what I also want to unpack is something that I feel wasn't developed enough on, on the television show, uh, Married to Medicine. You are a boss babe. And I think that <laughs> audiences need to know a lot more about that. You have a college degree what is it mm -hmm. in computer technology? Is it computer information systems? Yeah. 
So, um, yeah, I mean, I went to college. I, I actually started off doing computer science, but I wanted to incorporate business because I knew I just didn't want to sit at a computer and do programming all day long. That wasn't me. And I've always loved fashion. Like, that's always been something. So I knew that, like, okay, I, I'm going to take the move, move to New York City, get into the fashion cosmetic world, and, and try to use what I got my degree in. And so I worked for this company called Cody. Cody. Mm -hmm. They manufacture all the fragrances that are out there. So, like, Marc Jacobs, Calvin Klein, like, all the big, big, even, like, some of the celebrity fragrances, like Kim Kardashian. So... Um, so yeah, so I, I was a global forecasting executive analyst there and um, I did a lot of macros there. So I did some programming. I went to Paris, um, did a lot of work up there because the headquarters was in Paris. So yeah, and I, I've worked for, God, I don't even know how many years, but since 2001. So yeah. Um, and then like once I got married, I had to leave my dream job and that was literally the best job I've ever had. Like, I mean, I've worked at different companies, but working for Cody was amazing. Um, and we, we got married I moved to, we moved to Columbus, Ohio, lived there for a year and then we moved to Atlanta. So talk so. about that a little bit more, because there are women who are struggling between, you know, doing something that is degree entailed or doing something else that kind of coincides with their purpose and their passion. Did you step away from corporate America because you wanted to, you know, build your family or was it because it just wasn't fulfilling anymore? What was the real reason for that? No, I think at that time, I think my goal was, okay, I'm going to concentrate on having babies and having kids. And up until I delivered, I was working. So when we moved to Atlanta, I found another corporate job and worked because I'm just not the type of person to stay home and not do anything. I mean, I love being a housewife, but I feel like I have to keep myself busy and keep doing stuff. Like that's just the type of person I am. And so... Um, I think after I had my baby, I was like, I do want to spend some time with them and like be with them as they're young. And, you know, I think Kieran's parent, like, you know, in our culture too, we love to, I mean, I think in any culture, we love to nurture our baby, especially when they're so little. So I was there with them for a few years. And then I was like, you know, let me try this blogging thing. You know, like I'm actually shopping through influencers. I think I can do it. I love, I love to shop through them. I love to look at fashions through them. And, and literally I would like buy everything, the bloggers that I would follow, I would watch them and everything that they would show, I would literally purchase. And I'm like, I can do this, you know, like this is, and my friends and family, they all encouraged me at that time. They were like, do it. You know, you're at home, you have a young child, like while you're home with him, you could do this on the side. And so that's when I started doing that. And I didn't think it would grow. I honestly started it off doing it for fun and then it just escalated and got bigger and bigger and bigger. And at that time, like there weren't that many Indians doing it either. Mm -hmm. So I think that was kind of my niche, niche being Indian and then, um, you know, kind of tailoring towards the moms that are out there, you know, that are still trying to look trendy and fashionable and at an affordable price. So I mm -hmm. would show things from like Amazon Prime to Target, then to like high end looks you know so you would get a mix of all of it i love it i don't even think that you realize that you gave a lot of people who may be sitting at home now the blueprint on how to turn a passion mm -hmm. into a purpose and also yeah. to monetize it do what exactly. you love do what yes. you love to do yes and it's it's like any business right you start off small like i was working with small little brands initially but I knew there was going to be a goal, you know, and I kept growing and growing and bigger brands were reaching out to me. And then there were like big time partnerships and campaigns that would pay so well to a point where I was making a, a good amount of salary yearly, you know, until mm -hmm. pandemic hit. And that's when things, you know, slowed down a bit, but it picked right back up. So it's been Love great. It. And the name of your blog is Peplum and Bubblegum, correct? Yeah, so that's what the name was before, but I've changed it now to my name because I think it was getting really confusing <laughs> for people to like find me or know who Anila is. But yeah, like that's what it started off with because honestly, I think the blog initially was going to be like incorporating my kids as well. So it's like peplum was like a, like a type of shirt yeah. and then bubblegum was like 
for my kids. So it was gonna, it's kind of like a mom blogger type of thing. Love it. So that's, so when, yeah. When you changed the name, it was because uh, you heard feedback from other people because once again, a blueprint and a lesson for aspiring entrepreneurs. What you may start off with, it may change eventually. So you yeah. have to listen to the feedback and know when to make a change in your business. Mm -hmm. That was a great story. Yeah, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> so, you know, what I love, because I'm a mom, I'm a mother mm -hmm. of a 26-year-old girl, and I love to be fashionable. Aww. She keeps me young. I yeah. love high-end pieces, low-end pieces. So give yep. some advice to women like me who are mothers of young adult children on fashion because i'm at this stage now where i want to be on the beach with a bikini and my daughter's like don't do it <laughs> you're too old for that you can you can you can, you can totally do anything you want but honestly right now the trends are like the pastel colors are really in for the spring um those like big like um uh, yes uh -huh. those padded blazers like big bigger blazers so nothing has to be super fitted you could wear like a a nice fitted tank underneath it with a big blazer boyfriend jeans are really in um of, of course crop tops are still in but um but yeah i mean bodycon dresses are definitely in as well but yeah i mean us moms we can dude if you want to wear it i say go for it oh i did do, do what makes you feel good I already Where did went Puerto Rico a few weeks ago. So. <laughs> Good for you. Good for you. How do you feel about Crocs? I like them. They're cute for the spring, summertime. They're not bad. No. They're I easy like to put on. And yeah. hun, I, I live in flip-flops all through the summer. And that's what I mean. Like, you know, if you can put an outfit together and you put flip-flops or Crocs on, if it works with the outfit, go for it. Got it, got it. I told my daughter I'm gonna get my Crocs blinged out because that's the <laughs> type of mother that I am. But let's just yeah. kind of go back to the show real quick and we're gonna wrap this yeah. up. Um, how has the show changed your life? Um, you know, definitely when I'm out in the public, people do notice us, you know. I, I, Honestly, sometimes I just wonder who's watching, who's not. You just never know. But especially when we go to the airport, people will recognize our family for sure. So I think getting recognized is definitely um, changed because yeah. I don't think anyone knew me before. <laughs> um, I would say that's probably the biggest thing. But really, you know, I've been just myself, you know, and I, I, I'm the same. I was the same on the show as I am today, you know, so... I think it's more just getting recognized more than ever. Now there's another star of the show in my eyes, you know, and I think that she should be um, a <laughs> cast of Married to Medicine, your mother. <laughs> <laughs> she is a handful. She is a lot. Oh my and God. She has I, zero filter. You can tell I, my mother, she was the same way, no filter. So, you know, this is why I was kind of connected. Yeah, it's funny because people think that she's doing too much, but that is her. Like she is just loud and just crazy and all over the place. And she'll just ramble and talk about whatever. And she doesn't even realize that she could be embarrassing me or, <laughs> you know, like sometimes I'm just like, oh, stop. But all our life, she has been like this. All our life. Nothing wrong with that. I can picture your mother just coming over one day and saying, okay, are we filming today? Like, are we filming tomorrow? Like, what's <laughs> our schedule like? <laughs> she thinks she is the star of the show, but really, she's not even trying hard. That you is know. like, if you, didn't have, if you were just to fly on the wall and just watch my mom, that's how she would be. Sometimes I'm, every day, when I see, whenever I see her, I'm like, where are the cameras right now? Because. <laughs> She's acting a fool. Like she's yeah. actually coming. Um, I think this weekend she's going to be coming and seeing our house for the first time. Oh, so that's yeah. right there. The house is finished. Yeah, this is our house. My my closet's not fully done, so everything that you see open, the, those are going to be mirrors. So we're waiting nice. on mirror and glass and all that to come through. But it's nice. like a Chanel type theme closet. 
Love it, love it. So, you know, once again, you did an amazing job as the newest cast member on Married to Medicine. Congrats on your you. new home. Please tell your mother that I said hello. I will, <laughs> I will. And before we wrap this up, I just want us, uh, my my viewers and my listeners to be able to follow you. Give us your social media handles. Yeah, so please follow me on Instagram at Anila Saja. I'm trying to get to 100,000. Come on, help me out. <laughs> um, and even on Facebook, it's at Anila Saja. Um, on uh, Twitter, at Anila Saja. So just look my name up and follow. I'll be following you within a few short Yay. moments. I truly Yay. will. So just one last question. Will you be returning next season to Bravo's Married to Medicine? If the opportunity is given, um, I would love to be part of it. Got it. Well, mm -hmm. you know, Anila, thank you so, so much for this conversation. Thank I'll be you. tuned in every single week. I'll be crossing my fingers to make sure that you on the next season. Thank you so thank much. You. Thank you so much. You take nice care. Nice meeting you. Nice meeting you too. Bye-bye. So there you have it, Anila Saja from Bravo TV's Married to Medicine. It was an absolute pleasure talking to her. Once again, not just about her appearance, on the show, but just unpacking those pivotal moments and milestones on the show and off of the show. Just talking about, I like the topic about girl code. I really do because, you know, a lot of people, you need to self-reflect. We always want other people to embody girl code, but are you about that life too? And I was really serious about that comment to Anila. Yes, you know, Toya on the show, she may have said some things, she may have done some things, but do you realize that you were talking to people that she wasn't in good relationship with? Enemies? You don't do that. I've gotten rid of people who brought me toxic information, gossip, bad news spewed from someone else. Yeah, we do kill the messengers over here in Brooklyn too. So like I told you, just sign you on air unpacking pivotal moments and milestones from celebrities do me a favor make sure that you subscribe to sign you on air and then guess what also i just launched sign you on air lifestyle i'm going to give you just the amazing video of all of these celebrity events that I attend. People are always asking me, oh, Sonia, how was the event? Oh, Sonia, can I go to the next event? I don't mix business and pleasure. So no friends can't go with me to events because I'm working. I'm there working. So I put videos together to show you about these amazing events that I went to. I just uploaded a video of the Chianti Classical wine tasting that I went to here in New York City. It was absolutely amazing also this subscribe subscribe here. subscribe i'm not going to say that enough but sign your ear is also offering amazing advertising space i have amazing an amazing affiliate where we can this get you billboard here. space in 41 cities across the united states and for those who jump in on this advertising this special i have a free sign your own ear gift so once again, thank you for tuning in. This has been another amazing edition of Sonia on Air. I love you so much for tuning in. Smooches dolls. Bye-bye.